It is possible to do trills on trombone. The obvious way to do this is that if you have an F attachment valve, you could certainly move it to trill. The end of the Morso Symphonique brings uh, an example to mind. Um, if you choose to do this, then uh, take it easy. It will never sound like a trill of a trumpet, a piston valve, or something like that. So uh, try not to do too many oscillations back and forth. Um, just minimize them like I did and treat it like it is. It's just an embellishment. So don't make a big deal out of it if you don't, if you choose to do this. Uh, I don't recommend trying to do it way down in the low register. Perhaps there are some exceptions, particularly for a bass trombonist. Uh, but the other kind of trill is basically just a lip trill or an embouchure trill. And I'd like to use the beginning of the Wagenzahl concerto as my example for this one. Now this trill doesn't last very long, so you've got to be pretty clever about inserting it. You'll notice a couple of things. I started on the note above. This is stylistically accurate for the Baroque period when this piece was written, but it also helps you set up the proper interval in the listener's ear. So if I do an oscillation or two from um, the note is the E flat and the note that you're trilling to is the F. So if I put the F out in sharp four, I'll use that alternate position, and I do a few oscillations that are genuinely F to E flat. Um, and then as the trill gets faster, I'm gonna stop moving my slide. And essentially at the end, I'll be going really fast, but I'm gonna be trilling from E flat to the next partial up, which is actually G flat. But because I set that F up in the ear of the listener, then they will still hear the right interval. It's a little bit of an aural sleight of hand. Here it is in slow motion. So by the end, once again, <clears throat> I'm basically trilling a minor third, but my hope is that you'll at least a little bit continue to hear the, uh, the major second that should be heard. 